Hi everyone, I am Balaji Chipada and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In continuation of our linear algebra series, in this video, we will learn about squares and rectangles in 2D, 3D and n dimensions. So without any delay, let's get started. Let's talk about squares and rectangles. And as we are going through the whole series of linear algebra, we will first learn everything in 2D and we will approximate this in 3D and then we will approximate everything in n dimensions clear and as we are talking about squares and rectangles why are we merging both of them because if all sides of a given uh, shape is equal then we call it as a square if two sides are equal or opposite sides are equal we call it as a rectangle and whatever we learn for square it is also applicable for rectangle so that is why i am merging both of these two topics in a single video so let's say I have the axis X and Y like this and I have origin 0 comma 0 and assume I have a point or square like this. So this point is basically 2 comma 5 because X comma Y and this is 6 comma 5. It is 6 comma 9 and it is 2 comma 9. So this is a square and if you notice the sides of, of my square are parallel to the axis that I have and we also have other types of squares in which my square or sides are not parallel to my axis so this is a square and these sides are not parallel to our axis and we will talk about this in the later part of this video but right now focus on the squares in which the sides are in parallel to the given axis and then we will approximate what to do if the par if parallel is not there so if you look at this uh, axis or square clearly i have this value as 2 and i have this as 6 and I have this as 5 and I have this as 9. So I will give the names x1, x2 and y1 and y2. Clear? Now what I will say the traditional equation of line is y equal to mx plus c. So what I would do I will keep m equal to 1 and c equal to let's say minus 2 and y equal to 0. Now this equation would become x equal to 2 clear so what is x equal to 2 this is a line which is looking something like this now we have to learn given a, any point let's say p naught and i will say xi comma yi i would have to define whether this point lies on my square or inside my square or outside my square that is our main motto right so how are we going to do it as we have learned right now x equal to 2 is a line in which we have a equation or line in parallel to my y axis so if i say x greater than 2 what does that mean so all of these points are on this side of the line clear that that is what x1 greater than 2 means right and if i say x less than 2 all of the points which are lying on this side now basing on this one condition or one logic we can define whether a point is given inside a square or not by using some if else conditions now let's talk about one more equation which is x equal to 6 so this is the x equal to 6 and if i say x greater than 6 then all the points outside this line and if i say x less than 6 then all the points on this side of this line so that means here i am covering these points right so if i say as a condition if my x1 greater than 2 and also x2 less than 6 if this condition is met then my data falling in this region but i want to find out whether the point is inside the square or not that means i would have to find conditions for the y-axis as well clear so these two are equations which is y1 equal to 5 and y1 equal to 9 so if i say y1 greater than 5 then all these points and y1 less than 9 that means all these points so if i combine this with y1 greater than 5 and y1 less than 9 so if a given point satisfies all of these conditions then the point lies inside my square clear if any of these are violating then my point is not lying inside my given square hopefully that is clear and we can approximate the same thing for the rectangle as well 
so by using these equations let me summarize this so let's say i have this axis and i have a square like this and i have values x1 x2 y1 and y2 so let's say i was given a point p0 which is xi comma yi clear and this xi should be greater than my x1 because it should be on this region right so if xi greater than x1 and xi less than x2 and also yi greater than y1 this one and yi less than y2 so if my given point xi yi satisfies these conditions then i can conclude that given point given point p not lies inside my square and i can say the same thing regarding rectangle as well let's say this is my rectangle and we call it as x3 and x4 and then y3 and y4 because square and rectangle share similar properties given a new point i can build some if else conditions like this and i can say whether a point is on the square in the square or outside of the given shape and remember these if else conditions because in machine learning there is an algorithm called decision trees in which we try to build these if else conditions automatically so if you are learning or getting habituated for these if else conditions it would be really good if when you are learning decision trees and all the other machine learning logic so hopefully that is clear so if you have any queries so far please let me know in the comment section below and i will reply to each and every one of you now let's take one more example in which we have a square or a rectangle which is not parallel to the given axis so let's say this is my x and y and i have origin 0 comma 0 and i have a square like this so in this scenario how am I going to specify these if else conditions? Because if you look at, I have multiple x positions and I cannot quickly draw a conclusion, right? And I might have to find lot of conditions. So in this scenario, what we will do is, there is a technique called rotation of axis. Rotation of axis. So initially, this is my x and y. So what I would do, I would rotate my x and y such that the x and y axis will become parallel to these ones so if i draw something like this so let's say this one and this one and i will say x dash and y dash so this is the rotated rotated axis and initially we have value as 0 comma 0 as a origin here we have something like uh, 1 comma minus 1 it could be anything we have to find what is this origin value and because we have this rotated axis and this is in parallel to what we have for the given shape now i can quickly draw these four lines and i will say x1 dash x2 dash y1 dash and y2 dash so all of these new points are on the rotated axis now if i say if my given point x1 greater than x1 dash and x1 less than x2 dash and also y1 greater than y1 dash and y1 less than y2 dash then my given point p0 which is x1 and y1 xi and yi this is lies inside my given square or a rectangle even though it is not in parallel to the axis so this technique is called rotation of axis and we can do this in multiple scenarios and i will also teach you when this is needed in a real world example in the, while we are doing all of these coding techniques and all that stuff so stay tuned for a couple of videos i just want to clear all the theory part first such that you know what is happening when i'm doing the coding part if you have any queries so far please let me know in the comment section below now that we have learned about 2d now let's generalize the same concept in 3d and assume i have a cuboid in a 3d space and i could have a rectangular 3d shape as well it's up to you and i would say this value is x1 and x2 and i am treating it as x and y and z axis if you are going for n dimensions you can treat it as x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 like that and here i will say y1 and y2 and on the z axis i will say z1 and z2 of course it is hard to visualize this in the z axis 
but this is what i can come up with you have to google what is a cuboid and visualize what is happening but when you have a cuboid in a three-dimensional axis you have all of these values on all of these planes and let's say i was given a point p0 which is x1 y1 sorry x0 y0 and z0 let's assume like that and now i have to confirm whether this point lies inside my cuboid or not so what we have learned whenever we have this point we have to compare the component with the x values and y component with the y values and z component with the z values so i would say if x0 greater than x1 and x0 less than x2 and also y0 greater than y1 and y0 less than y2 and y0 z0 greater than z1 and z0 less than z2 so if my point satisfies all of these conditions then p0 lies inside cuboid and any of these conditions are not satisfying then p0 doesn't lie inside my cuboid so if we talk about multiple axis and dimensions and we take the point p0 as x1 x0 x1 x2 up until xn and we have to take the axis let's say axis as uh, x11 x12 x13 and x1n so we have to take all of these points on all of these axis and each of this component will have to lie between those points if you are talking about n dimensions it's a little bit hard to explain it as well but i i hope you got the point on how to generalize the concepts of 2d and 3d to the n dimensions and that's all for this video guys hopefully you learned something new from this video and if you are liking what you are watching a sub to the channel would be amazing and click that bell icon to get notified daily we will meet in the next video bye bye